Welcome to the Everett Silver Show. We have exciting guests as we do every week. And so I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And I'm always bringing it to you. So thanks so much for staying in tune with us. Stay connected. You're watching the Everett Silver Show. What's up, Everett? Everett. Travis, Ronnie, thank you so much for doing the show. What a pleasure to have you. Thank you for, Thanks having, for having us. us. Well, folks, uh, MTV's uh, help. I'm in a, rela a secret relationship, uh, and we got to find out, um, you know, uh, why certain things may happen. And I have uh, Travis Mills, uh, who's a recording artist, acting also on air personality, uh, even the Travis Mills show. Uh, also have uh, Ronnie uh, Jones is here with us. Ronnie's an actor, writer, host, and activist, and so. Let's talk about, guys, uh, what's always interesting to me is that, uh, and I guess, Travis, I'll start with you, is why do you think sometimes if, if we feel like we found somebody that we feel like are for us, why do we hide? I feel like it's a communication issue, uh, first and foremost, and it's often a, an issue that somebody has with themselves, right? There's something that they really haven't done the inner work on. There's something that they feel like is inadequate is not enough um, and if the truth were to come out the people that they love wouldn't love them and it wouldn't be reciprocated and so we create you know these false scenarios and we we have to live a lie yeah that, that's always amazing now ronnie talk about though how uh, emotionally though draining is that to try to hold all that stuff in i mean i mean it's 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 like a big cloud over your life. You know, you have to keep up appearances, yeah. keep up, keep up lies, keep up, you know, the, these falsehoods uh, for the sake of you being afraid to to be vulnerable with your partner. And that will in turn affect your relationship, whether you think it will or not, because eventually the chickens are going to come home to roost, which might be in the form of us <laughs> knocking on your door <laughs> asking you to sit down and have a conversation with this person that that you say that you love so i can imagine the weight that is on the person that is doing the hiding but also the weight that is on, on the person that is being hidden it's 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 like a interesting uh dynamic that happens there well you know you uh guys trevor's are investigating you know uh you know that kind of covers the true behavior kind of behind the, these secrets. Is there anything ever jumped out at you that amazed you, Travis? Every single time. Uh, people never, you know, fail to surprise us. And, you know, you'd be, uh, you'd be surprised how deep into relationships and friendships, um, you know, people go in secrecy, essentially, and just like kind of, you know, one lie after another, stringing these things along uh, until Roddy and I pop up and, you know, the truth all gets laid out on the table and it's just one thing after another. And when you finally think you've heard it all, there's something else. <laughs> there's something else. Yeah, because I, I thought about a part. Y'all know uh, Mackie, he, man, he's been married. He's a part of the series. He's been married three years, is my understanding. And he still haven't introduced... You know, to the, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of, you're married now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, that was very interesting because, you know, like you said, Mar uh, Mackie and Sheffy um, had been married for three years and he was not at all introduced to the family. Like it was, it was mind boggling to know, to figure out why it took him this long or, and to, it, it just was like, did you not have the confidence to bring this up to your wife? You know, you love her enough right. to marry her, but there was just something there. And so I'm thinking, you know, was he afraid of what he might hear? Did he not want to cross those boundaries? We don't know. So it's our 
the point is we come in to to help solve these problems. But for Mackie, I was like, three years in a marriage is a long time to not get what you deserve. And so for us, we were like, we want you to have this conversation so you can finally figure out what your next steps are in this relationship. Well, you guys have a daunting task, man. You think in terms of just trying to uh, do you feel, and lastly, uh, you both can answer this quickly, Travis and uh, uh, Ronnie, is that do, do you ever feel inadequate at times to try to, you know, bridge the gap, though, with some of these secrets? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, look, we're all human, right? We we all share similar experiences. And, you know, at the end of the day, we all want to be loved. And I think that's what this all boils down to. And, um, you know, right. it's it's nice to kind of go into these into these situations and just be able to help. We're never trying to kind of destroy anyone's relationship. Um, we're just trying to help people kind of get, you know, the, the honest conversation that they deserve. And for me, I think it's just all about leading with empathy and dignity for both sides of the relationship. Well, I tell you, it's always interesting to me. I'm always glued to the set. Guys, you want to make sure uh, that you are MTV's hot show, uh, Help, I'm in a Secret Relationship. Premieres, I believe, February 28th, 9 p.m. on MTV. What a wonderful privilege to have Travis Mills, Ronnie Jones. Guys, thanks for doing the show. I appreciate having you. Thanks for having Thank us. Uh, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Well, guys, uh, thanks so much for tuning into the Everett Silver Show. Stay tuned. Don't turn that dial because we got more exciting guests right here on the Everett Silver Show. Be back in a moment. Hi, Everett. How are you? Hey, Nikki, thank you so much for doing the show. What a wonderful person to have you. Oh, uh, absolutely. I'm excited to be here. Now, Nikki, we got to talk about, um, you know, I guess we should probably start with this clean medicine. Can you start by, I guess, telling us more about what clean medicine is? Absolutely. So clean medicine is, um, you know, medicine that you would find that carries the same uh, effective ingredients that you would find in your traditional over-the-counter medicine. So we can use acetaminophen as a great example of that. Um, Genexa uses acetaminophen, which is your standard, you know, pain reliever, fever reducer, but without all of the artificial dyes and synthetic sweeteners and things like that, that you would find in other medicines that we don't really need. Genexa uses organic blueberry syrup as a sweetener, um, organic beetroot, organic honey. And so, you know, clean medicine is medicine um, that you can pronounce all of the ingredients in. Now, I heard you mention uh, Nikki Janexa. Uh, why does clean medicine matter to you and what motivated you to want to invest in Genex? So I would say about 10 years ago, I began... Um, you know, I was finding myself more curious about uh, organic food, um, the it, the ingredients that were in the products I was using, things like that, which led me naturally down the path of clean medicine. I became a mom. I started looking at, you know, packaging more closely, um, ingredient lists. And, you know, it's interesting that we're so focused on what we eat and what we put on our skin and clean beauty. And these are all such hot topics. But until recently, not a lot of people were talking about what was in our medicine, and that is just as important, if not more important. Medicine is what we go to, you know, in the most vulnerable moments of our lives, and oftentimes we're not really thinking, we're just grabbing for that bottle on the shelf, you know, if we're sick or our kids are sick, and so it's really important to actually understand what you're putting in your body all the time, but especially when you're sick. Now, um, <clears throat> Nikki, when you think in terms of... Uh... Can, can I guess, uh, I guess, you know, I guess advice to fellow parents, uh, parents can be overwhelming with all this uh, clean, you know, options uh, we have now, but what is your advice to fellow parents in navigating all of this? Oh, I think my advice would be to just continue to look deeper into everything. You know, I think we're um, inherently trusting beings. And so, you know, if we're familiar with something or if we've seen it for years or decades, we think, oh, that's got to be okay because it's been around for a long time. And the truth is, that's not the truth. You know, um, there's a lot of things that we've been unknowingly ingesting or putting on our bodies for decades. And, you know, we have to look at the, you know, 
amount of health issues that you know we're currently facing, I would say now more than ever. And um, transparency is something that I think consumers are now demanding, that parents are now demanding. And I think it's, it's just an incredibly important time to look even deeper um, into what you know, we're putting into our bodies and our little people's bodies. Now, I don't know how you do it, Nikki, balancing your career, family, along with, you know, being a strategic advisor to Genexa, but you are also the founder and CEO of Sustainable Fine Jewelry and Lifestyle, the brand I as a buyer with love. Please, please kind of, you know, let us in on your secret of how you balance and all of that. Oh, goodness. The secret is that I don't actually balance it very well. <laughs> I might talk about balance, but... I don't know that I'm balancing well. You know, I have a lot on my plate. I have a lot of passion. I will say that when you're passionate about things, it doesn't really feel like work. Um, but I do wear many hats in many different companies. But there is one, you know, common theme throughout all of them, which is conscious living. You know, you would think, what does clean medicine have in common with fine jewelry? Well, how we're producing things and the questions that we're asking while we're producing things and doing things in a better way, better for the planet, better for people, better for our children. Um, you know, that is the common thread woven between all of it. So I'm, I'm really excited to be a part of everything that I'm a part of, but I'm particularly excited about Genexa and clean medicine because I really think that this is something that the world truly needs. And, um, you know, that's why I wrote the, the company just as a fan, as a parent, you know, and said, hey, I want to invest. I want to be a part of this. I want to talk about this and spread this message. And, um, yeah, so thanks for having me here today to talk about this. Well, I got to tell you, when you think in terms of what you do as an actress, you know, environmentalist, uh, Genexa investor, Nikki Reader, was just a wonderful talking to you today. Uh, on your, you know, your your natural lifestyle and stuff that you own, and being the founder and president CEO of your own company, that's a lot, a lot to swallow. But the guys, what a wonderful privilege to have Nikki Reed with us today. Nikki, thanks for doing the show. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon. I hope. Now, listen. One thing, Nick. I'm sorry. Where do we go for information to find you? So if you want just information, I would say the website, genexa.com, is a great place to find it. There's a tab that just says clean medicine right at the top, and you can click on it. And for me, that's the best place because you can just literally see a direct comparison list. Here's what's in Genexa. Here's not what's in Genexa. And it made everything very clear for me. But if you're looking for Genexa to actually buy it, it's in all the places that you're already familiar with. So CVS, Walgreens, Walmart, um, places you know and love, they all carry Genexa. Well, again, guys, the wonderful actress, uh, environmentalist, and also Genex investor, Nikki Reed. Nikki, thanks for doing the show. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. More guests coming your way. Don't touch that dial. I'll be back in a moment. Hello, Everett. No, thank you. I appreciate you doing the show. Pleasure to have you, sir. Good to be here. Well, folks, MTV uh, don't leave. Uh, they present "Don't Leave Me Behind" stories of a uh, young Ukrainian uh, survival, and I have the wonderful privilege of talking to executive producer and also director Nathania uh, Lesra is here with us. And um, a powerful documentary, uh, Nathania. Let's talk about. Man, you know, I, I don't know where we start when I know the series has got uh, teens, refugees from Ukraine and their survival. Uh, let's talk about it. Where do we start? Where do we start? I mean, th so the film focuses on, you know, it's an examination of the mental health impact of the war on on these kids, on refugees who fled Ukraine. Um, and it sort of picks up with them in Poland. This is a country that they they don't speak the language often, and they're sort of asking what's next. And we follow a number of characters, um, a number of people as they navigate their life, and they volunteer, and they are a part of a group therapy um, session uh, uh, um, program that helps young Ukrainians um, deal with the mental health impact of the war. And it's really about asking what this generation is going to do with this trauma that they've experienced. Now, when you think in terms of the thing, just the separation, you mentioned mental health piece, but the separation from families, uh, you know, I, talk about the, just the trauma of, of, you know, what some of these kids and folks are going through, man. I mean, it's, it's, it's just something. It is. It's, 
it's unimaginable in so many ways. It's, you know, not, not only are these people in the midst of witnessing violence at home and, and, and witnessing the destruction of their towns, their cities, um, at the hands of Russian aggression, they are simultaneously being told their families have to be, uh, um, separated because, you know, Ukrainian martial law asks, um, men starting at the age of 16 to stay at home so they're on military reserve and uh what you find statistically the vast majority of of refugees fleeing ukraine are young mothers with their kids so our film looks at not only the impact of war on the mental health um landscape of of these young ukrainians who fled but also what is it to uh experience that and to have your father at home you know, you have your have your family separated in that way. Now, talk about you mentioned me mental health, but what type of mental health support, though, are, are, are afforded them, you know, during these times uh, that may be given? Does the documentary bring that out as well? It does. It does. Um, that's one of the major, major um, story points of the film. You know, we we encounter a lot of grassroots support. Um, we tell the story of um, a therapist named Katya and her organization, um, Your Development, Stechen is the name of the organization that she works for. And that that specific group is, is dedicated specifically to the mental health support of young Ukrainian refugees and refugees and people impacted more broadly by the war. Um, but otherwise, you know, there's governmental support in, in a number of these different countries. There's a lot of NGO focus on on refugee support. There is not enough mental health support in general. I think that that's one of the big uh, goals of the film is to draw people's focus, shine a light on the often the absence of resources and support um, put into conversations about mental health for refugees. So that's kind of what we want to do with this film. You know, Nathaniel, lastly, I just can't imagine waking up, man, and uh, finding out my country is in war, fighting over some, you know, and, and God knows what. I mean, you know, you, you mentioned martial law and all, but um, what made you, you are you are an award-winning doc, you know, you've been doing docuseries for a while. What made you connect with this story? I was I was in Europe uh, the the evening the morning I should say of the invasion. It was five a.m. on February twenty fourth, and I was in Madrid. And you know I'm I'm Jewish. I, I am my father is Spanish, and I was there, and I saw the tone of Europe on the drop of a dime change, and the tone shifted. It was tense. There were protests in the street, and I didn't see conversation about the impact of this war on people on on the on young on young people on the mental health of these of these people there was a lot of statistical analysis there was a lot of discussion of the politics but there wasn't any real conversation about what is happening in the hearts and minds of these people who have to flee suddenly and yeah. it just grabbed me and i wanted to engage and go deeper yeah well i tell you i appreciate all of your work man i tell you it's real uh, the award-winning uh you know, all your stuff that you're doing and bringing to you. I want to let everybody know that, again, uh, MTV presents uh, Don't Leave Me Behind, Stories of Young Ukrainian Survival. Uh, I believe it uh, premieres February the 21st, uh, 10 p.m. on MTV. Is that correct? That's correct. And, man, what a pleasure to have executive producer Nathaniel uh, Lezra uh, and also director of this wonderful documentary series that covers such these, uh, uh, you know, situations, teen refugees from Ukraine. Thank you so much, uh uh, what you do, sir. Of course. Thank you. Are you More guests coming your way. Don't touch that dial. Be back in a moment. Oh, you're so welcome. Well, uh, what's new, uh, cutting edge and kind of the anti-aging skincare? And we're, um, out of today trying to see if we can uncover some of the secret powers and breakthroughs of technology you know with uh, some of the biggest uh, experts in the field i have dermatologist uh, dr doris day and also i have dr thomas hitchcock uh who's the chief science officer at crown uh laboratories and so i want to welcome them both so uh what do we have i guess need to know about what comes with the latest uh, and greatest skin science well, we are so happy to tell you about a new breakthrough. 
Most people know that we have a gut microbiome because that's always in the news, it seems. But many people don't realize that your skin is also alive and teeming with tiny microorganisms, just like in your gut. And so after a decade of research, we now have an exciting innovation using a first of its kind living technology found in a new topical line called BioJuve. And the live microbes in the line are called Zycrobes. It's designed and proven to optimize the skin biome, and it helps combat unwanted signs of skin aging in a more complete and lasting way than traditional skincare because it uses your skin's existing ecosystem to your advantage. And when it's used as a daily regimen, the clinical study showed improvement in things like texture and tone and fine lines, wrinkles, sun damage, helps make the pores appear smaller. And this is something all of my patients want. And the scientific literature now unequivocally shows us that the skin's biome is a key contributor to promoting balanced, healthier, younger looking skin. So I was thrilled when I saw Dr. Hitchcock and his team set out to create a line of products that supports establishing and maintaining a healthy skin biome. It's something he and I have been talking about for at least 10 years. Yeah, at least. Um, it's true that the Baoju products are a unique biological breakthrough and we are very proud to introduce it as a new approach to skin biome care which is much more than just skin care. Uh, the zygrobes in BioJuve are derived from a unique strain of a native skin, microbi uh, native skin microbe which maximizes skin health both on as well as below the surface of the skin which is where they love to live and thrive. And introducing these zygrobes to the existing skin ecosystem really helps to curate the right strains of the microbes the right food source for those microbes, and the right environment that leads to a balanced skin biome 24-7. And while most skincare products are commonly formulated that use ingredients that we all love, and they address various skin concerns, however, the fact is that they have formulations that don't really do right by the microbes that live on the skin, and this can impact the balance of the skin biome as a whole. So the BioJu product line that we've created is the first of its kind skin biome care products, which encompass a full regimen, everything from cleansing the skin to sun protection, and they all work together to maintain a healthy skin biome. And then is there any other thing you guys want to share about? Because this is a great breakthrough because, um, and you know, how someone can find more out about the product and, uh, you know, what, what else we need to know about. Sure. So you can go to biojuve.com, B-I-O-J-U-V-E.com to learn more, including how to find a dermatologist near you that, can, that carries it and can show you the right way to use it for you. And then also Dr. Hitchcock and I were so proud to announce you're getting the total scoop on this one. Our new book is just out. It's on Amazon.com, live on Kindle today, and then later this week in hardcover and paperback on Amazon.com. And what we talked about was the skin biome, everything that this line speaks to, but we tell you a lot of the science behind it. It's very entertaining, it's a fun read. There are stories in it that, you, that you'll be floored by, mm -hmm. but you'll, you'll come out going, oh my God, I need to take care of my skin. I need to think when I wash my hands, do I really need to do it like this? What am I using on my skin? And what am I putting in my body? Because that also affects mm -hmm. my skin. It's called so, rebooting the biome. Oh, yeah, I forgot to say that. <laughs> rebooting the biome. And it is basically the philosophy that's described in the book. We call the whole of biome philosophy that our whole ecosystem of our bodies is important to consider not just our human parts. And uh, it's the philosophy by which the BioJuve line was created by. Yep, rebooting the biome. Well, I tell you, that, that is an awesome breakthrough. Uh, and uh, you, you talk about it contributing to your 10 years of research, and I'm, I can hear the excitement in you guys' voice. Uh, but uh, thank you so much for what you guys do. I want to thank, again, dermatologist Dr. Doris Day and also Dr. Thomas uh, Hitchcock, Chief Science uh, Officer at Crown Laboratories. Guys, what a, what a breakthrough, and I celebrate what you guys are doing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good to talk to you. You're so welcome. More guests coming your way. Don't touch that dial. I'll be back in a moment. Hi, you, Carrie, and hi, Crystal. Thank you for doing the show. What a pleasure to have you both. Thank you so much for having us. <clears throat> You're so welcome. When it comes to um, navigating life as cancer survivor, uh, black women, after you know, kind of often face a unique, difficulty, a uh, kind of journey. 
and several studies have kind of come out. We got to talk about that. That's kind of you know sh- sh- shows you know, that that women may experience some different things. So join us today with an initiative called Survivor Today, and what it's like uh, you know living with cancer. I have Crystal, who's a breast cancer survivor, and also you carry a board in uh, oncology social worker, also vice president of health uh, equity at. Uh, Cancer Support Community, and so I want to welcome them both. And so, uh, you, you, Carrie, I'll start with you. Uh, during your time as an oncology social worker, what did you observe about the experience, you know, black women who are, are cancer survivors? Thank you. So while this might not be the experience for all black women who are cancer survivors, in my professional experience, there are unique challenges that they face. Things like lack of representation in the medical community, medical mistrust, lack of communications about mental health, or even experiencing feelings of shame for going outside of the community to seek help. And that's why I'm so glad to be here as an oncology social worker representing the cancer support community, where we've received support from Bristol Myers Squibb on a number of initiatives. And then, uh, Crystal, what can uh, we, I guess you tell us about, uh, I guess, your journey and, you know, know, tell us about your journey. Yes, I have the privilege of sharing my story with you through Bristol Myers Squibb Survivorship Today program in which I am being compensated for my time with you today. Um, I was diagnosed with early stage breast cancer in 2019. I was 38 years old and I pride myself on being a really independent person. So I didn't want a lot of people to know that I had breast cancer. I just wanted to deal with it on my own, but I did have to lean on support from my immediate family not only physically, but financially and emotionally. Um, And, you know, in addition to also leaning on my faith to get me through my breast cancer journey, um, it was traumatizing for me. And so I learned that I needed professional help to make sure I was processing my emotions around breast cancer in a healthy way. So I did seek out mental health counseling for myself. And then, Chris, I got to ask you, how did it affect your mental health? Um, As I stated before, it's very traumatizing, and there's just a lot of fears um, that are associated with um, having a a breast cancer diagnosis. So, um, you know, I I felt like instead of just trying to be strong and grin and bear that I I needed to get help before I went down that dark hole really, really fast. (laughs) Right. Now, uh, you carry what can uh, survivors do if they are struggling, you know, with mental health, as Crystal was talking about? When we talk about cancer, we often focus on or even hear about what it means to be physically well, but we must focus on what it means to be mentally well, especially as you heard Crystal talk about how overwhelming it all felt. And it's okay to not be okay. And what that looks like is opening up to someone on that care team to tell them what you're experiencing. You know, it doesn't have to be the doctor. It could be a nurse. It could be an oncology social worker. But as long as you're speaking up, then you can get the help that you need, but only until you do. Now, Crystal, tell us more about the Survivorship Today uh, program. Tell us about that. Yes, Survivorship Today um, was created by Bristol Myers Squibb as a platform for cancer survivors of all ages, races, and genders to shed light on what their life is like living with cancer and after a cancer diagnosis. Um, A lot of times there are a lot of misperceptions about what that looks like, and everyone has a unique journey and a unique experience when dealing with cancer. So through Survivorship Today, the goal is to let people know Um, that they're not alone, and for us to be able to encourage more support resources for the cancer community. And then uh, you carry, uh, lastly, uh, where can survivors go? Because we talk about a support system for a better support system and things that help them kind of navigate, you know, this process. Absolutely. So all survivors can certainly talk to their care team to, to get recommendations for local and national resources. And one of the best national resources is survivorshiptoday.com, as Crystal just mentioned. You know, it's where a patient or their loved ones can go to hear those stories from diverse survivors. Well, I want to again thank uh, Crystal, uh, who's a breast cancer survivor. Also, you carry a board and has been with us, oncology social worker, vice president of health uh, equity at our cancer support community. Guys, thank you so much. And uh, that's what we're here to do to bring awareness to uh, our information.
information. So thank you for doing the show. Thank you so much for having us. You're so welcome. <laughs> So 